Electromagnetic simulation is used heavily in the design of many electromagnetic systems and components. An example of this is sensors for ADAS. And when designing these sensors, the excitation of the signal is critical to the accuracy of the design for collision avoidance. ANSYS HFSS is often used during the design stage and is an integral part of the design process. And in order to calculate the fields and S parameter matrix that's associated with the model geometry, HFSS needs ports. The excitation or ports are where the signal goes into the model geometry. And they have a direct impact on the quality of the results that HFSS yields for a given model. The proper creation and use of excitation is important to obtain the most accurate HFSS results. And in this video module, I'm going to describe the available port types inside of HFSS, ANSYS Electronics Desktop. There are several port types, several different types of excitations in HFSS. We have wave ports, lumped ports, flow cable ports, incident fields, current sources, voltage sources, magnetic bias sources, circuit ports. A wave port is the most commonly used type of excitation in HFSS. And the wave port represents the region or the area where the energy enters or sources the solution space. And this port therefore is literally suited to sourcing structures that are good transmission lines, such as microstrips, strip lines, coaxial or waveguide transmission line. And the wave port should be applied only at the outer faces of the solution volume. And the wave port yields S, Y, Z parameters, characteristic wave impedance and gamma the propagation and attenuation constant. The S parameters that are produced by the wave port are generalized and can be viewed as S parameters that use the frequency dependent characteristic wave impedance of the port as their normalization constant. A key consideration when being a wave port is the port size. As stated, wave ports are regions where energy enters into the solution space. So wave ports are also attached to the virtual waveguide. And this is the fundamental reason why the exact size of a wave port is important. HFSS generates a solution by exciting each wave port individually, where each desired incident mode contains one watt of time average power. And to find a solution to a given port, the desired port is energized with one watt of power, while all the other ports in the simulation are set to zero watts, to zero incident power. And wave ports can be used either in the driven mode solution type or the driven terminal solution type. Depending on the solution type chosen, the wave port setup is slightly different. When you create a wave port in a driven modal solution type, the user, you, must specify the number of modes desired. And for waveguide simulations, the determination of the needed or the wanted modes is pretty straightforward. But when a wave port is used to source a transmission line, such as a microstrip line, the number of modes should be set equal to the number of signal traces that are enclosed within the given wave port. For instance, for a closed planar pair of microstrip lines enclosed within a single wave port, two modes should be specified. And in the final solution, these two modes represent the even and odd modes of propagation. So the user should also set an integration line in the port. And while the integration line allows the calculation of the voltage-based wave impedance that's traveling on the transmission line, it also serves as a phase reference. So as a result, the integration line should be drawn in a consistent fashion for all the ports. If the integration lines are drawn in a non-consistent manner on the different ports, 
you can artificially induce a 180 degree phase shift. So it's good modeling practice to draw the integration lines between the points of the maximum potential difference in a wave port. And when creating the wave port in the driven terminal solution type, the location and the number of modes needed is automatically determined by HFSS. Additionally, the proper number of integration lines needed is also automatically created by HFSS. Love ports are the other commonly used excitation type in HFSS, and this port type is analogous to a current sheet source, and it can also be used to excite commonly used transmission lines. Lump ports are also useful to excite voltage gaps or other instances where the wave ports are not applicable. They should only be applied internally to the solution space. And lump ports are ports that can be used in simulations where energy needs to be sourced internally to a model. Lump ports are simpler to create than wave ports and that they don't yield as much information as wave ports. So lump ports can yield the S, Y, and Z parameters and fields, but they don't provide the gamma or the wave impedance information. And the results of a lump port cannot be de-embedded, but can be renormalized. And unlike to the wave ports, a lump port can support only one single mode of propagation. A lump port can be defined on any 2D object that has edges which contact two conducting objects. And the boundary that is applied to all edges that do not touch a conductor is defaulted to be a perfect H. And that ensures that the normal electric field is equal to zero watts on those edges. And when you're creating a lump port, it's necessary that you draw an integration line for each port. And the integration line should be drawn between the center points of the edges that contact the conductor or metal objects. And the complex impedance that's defined when the port was created serves as the reference impedance of the S matrix of the lumped port. And that impedance has the characteristics of a wave impedance and is used to determine the strength of the source, such as the modal voltage V and the modal current I, and through the complex power normalization. And the main differentiator between the lump port and the wave port is the location of where they're applied in the model. And the wave ports, in general, should be applied to the outer faces of your solution space, outside your volume. And lump ports should only be used internal to the solution space. So another key difference is that wave ports are specifically suited to source good transmission lines. And while lump ports are well suited to source structures that are not good transmission lines, such as BGAs, wire bonds, etc. So in this video, we reviewed the most commonly used ports inside the ANSYS HFSS EM simulation tool, wave ports and lump ports. And port setup is very important as they define the excitation or the signal that induces the field response inside your model geometry. And in ADAS collision avoidance applications, signal tracking, along with the electromagnetic field response in your sensor design is not only essential, but is necessary. Thank you for watching this video.